this is the last day of the World of Coffee Expo here in Copenhagen. And I got some good content for you guys. I got some from Olympia Express, from Profitech, from Time More, and of course from Eureka. So put in just a little bit of a travel vlog for you guys. So anyhow, check around in the video. Just click on the timestamps of whatever you're interested in. And thanks very much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you found most interesting. Enjoy the video. So I am currently here at the Time War booth with Sam. And Sam is going to show us some cool new things from Time War. All right. Okay, so we have um, two brew sets right now that we're really excited about. The first of which is the S2C 890, which is this one over here on the left. And on the right, we have our pineapple burrs. So as you might notice, the pineapple burrs are a little bit taller. These are our next generation burrs. These are our current generation burrs. Both of them make great coffee. So we have our S2C 890 across three different grinders. We have them in our um, Chestnut S3 series. We have them in our Me Lab over there, is it the E01. And we also have them in our new entry-level uh, espresso grinder, the Bricks, which is going to be coming out hopefully later this year. So we have basically all of these different grinders built for whatever kind of process you can throw at it. So whatever your workflow is right now, there's a good chance we could probably grind for it. Now what I think is uh, very interesting is this grinder here, uh, the, you call it the Bricks, is that right? That's right, so the Bricks is really neat because it has a lot of the features from like our sculptor, but in a much more kind of slim, slimmed down form. So what this brings is it has um, a nice quiet motor. We also have uh, a hopper over here that doubles as a grind adjustment uh, mechanism. So the nice thing about this is you can unscrew it and you can pop it off, just like so. And then you can access your burrs for EVC serviceability. So it's a great, it's a great little grinder, and it's not going to wake up the kids in the morning. Well, what I also think that I see here is the, um, the knocker, is that right? That's right. So we brought over our rotary knocker from our Sculptor series. So what's nice about this is it means that you don't really have to do uh, WDT or um, RDT, right? So rather than doing Ross droplet technique, um, you could just one, two, just gone, and you can move on with your day without getting static um, cling. And the feeling of that is satisfying, isn't it? It really is. I love it. Uh, I'm curious about this grinder right down here. Can you show me that one and the dial adjustment on it? Certainly. So this is the Chestnut S3, and it brings um, our best ever uh, external adjustment. So it has um, our famous pull-to-fold handle that you guys all know and love. and you know, we are huge camera buffs uh, at Time War. We love photography. And so we were inspired by the aperture dials of our own cameras and how that feels, you know, that tactility, that sensation. And so what's amazing about this is it uh, feels just like a camera dial. It's super quiet. It's really easy to adjust. It's 12.5 microns of travel between each grind setting. And you have plenty to choose from, allowing you to go from espresso to French press. Yeah. The other thing that's nice about this is uh, we have a new dropout burr system. So formerly with a lot of our other grinders, our uh, burr adjustment, uh, yeah, our burr setting adjustment was on the bottom, right? And with these guys, we now have it so that you could actually drop out the burr set over here with this little lock, and you can clean it really easily. It also um, removes the need for having to zero your grinder after cleaning. It's already done for you from the factory. So you don't have to go hunting for your zero point once you reinstall your burr set. That's nice. And it looks like all of these grinders are made out of anodized aluminum, is that right? Right, so they're either made out of stainless steel um, or aluminum. It depends on which grinder you're looking at. We also use entirely food safe plastics or Triton, um, depending on which model we're looking at. And what about the bricks? Is that, I haven't touched it, is that aluminum or is that plastic? This is um, aluminum. So um, everything except for the hopper and um, the little bird carrier here is metal. We really try to make sure that you have a very premium tactile experience with this. So do you have like a timeline when that's coming to market and what the, the price is going to be on that? We're hoping that it's going to be around 249 US dollars. It's, uh, you know, we're really trying to hit a very affordable price point for this grinder. We want to get more people into espresso. It's such an amazing world and we're trying to democratize what has formerly been a very expensive part of uh, the coffee, uh, the coffee drinking community. Thank you so much, Tom. This was such a pleasure. Hope you have uh, safe travels back to Germany. Thank you very much, Sam. I do appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. All right. We'll see you soon, guys.
getting value from this video, please take a moment to like and subscribe. So I'm currently at the Propitech booth here, and everybody's been curious about this machine right here, the Go. People have been asking me for a long time, do a review on it, and I've just been too cheap to buy one. But here we got them at the Expo. So the Go, why does everybody want to get a Go? Why is it so popular? It is essentially a single boiler machine. It's uh, completely manual. It's just got a button to turn it on and off. It's got a button to start the pump up here, and it has got a button to turn it to steam mode. Then it's got a knob here for steam. It's got a really large dial there for the manometer, and it's got a PID. You can see there, it's still heating up. Now on the top, it's a very traditional design. It is bent sheet metal. You can see the corners here where it's been cut and fold it over. This is an adjustment for the pressure. The lid here for the water tank can be removed and set to the side in order to access the water tank. And the water tank is kind of like an Italian design, right? Where you just lift the sucker up and put it back in there. So I don't know, I would say that's still kind of, that's kind of old fashioned to be honest. Let's look around the side of the thing. Just, it's, a, it's pretty boxy. It's got the branding here on the back, Profitech. And it looks like the back, I thought at first it was riveted, but no, those are screws. Those are Allen screws uh, for the back panel there. So far, so good. It's got a 58 millimeter portafilter on there with two spouts. And let's take a look up there at the shower screen. That's what that looks like. Yeah, go ahead. If you do that, we can demo it. So we'll just do a quick demo of the goal. I guess one of the main advantages of it is that it only takes five minutes to heat up. And if all you need it for is espresso, then you're good to go. But because it is a single boiler, you do have to wait for it to increase temperature to get up to steam mode and then decrease temperature again. So if you're making a lot of cappuccinos, I'm not so sure if this machine is for you or not. But anyhow, let's see how the espresso looks coming out of there. Again, the advantage of this machine is the PID and the adjustable pressure screw from the outside. It's also got a shot counter. It's, there we go. Oh. oh, that looks nice. Like honey. Got 30 seconds on the shot timer right now, and it's just gonna shut it off. Pretty quiet machine, actually, for a vibratory pump. That's very quiet. And how's it look? It looks, looks, good. looks tasty, and how is it? Is it nice? Uh -huh. Right, so that is a Propitech go right there. So at the Propitech booth, they also have this new fancy machine right here. This is the Move. And so the Move is supposed to be essentially the replacement for the 300 series that they used to have. It's a dual boiler. You can adjust the amount of steam that you got. So we reduced that down to 1.2 bars so that hopefully I can steam all right on it. Too much pressure is not always the best thing because it's more difficult. And so I'm just going to do a little workflow here on the move. It's got wood accents, by the way. It's pretty, pretty nice from a haptic standpoint. One thing that's really strange about this machine, however, is that on the bottom of the portafilter, they've got a silicone spout attachment. And that is for the thermal stability. You could also remove it. So if you just pull that off, then you've got a bottomless portafilter. Now, one thing I did notice removing the drip tray here, and the drip tray does feel nice. You know, it's it's a, a nicely fabricated drip tray, pretty thick metal on it, and no sharp edges or anything. There were some sharp edges on the go. So if we remove this, what I noticed is that they've got a little holder here. So look at that. For the blind disc, they've got a little holder, and I think that is a nice thing. So you always know where your blind disc is at. But let's go ahead and do a workflow here with some espresso and milk steaming. Okay, so what's really strange about this border filter, of course, is you cannot tamp on the spout. You gotta put it there on the side in order to tamp. But let's just see what I can do here. I'll start the shot. So you can see the, the screen up there. It had a pre-infusion. It's got a shot counter, which is very nice. And here comes the espresso. 
the most important, the most interesting thing is going to be to see how well I can sing with this sucker. So, stop there, right about there. Oh, stopped on its own. 22 seconds. First, I'm going to purge the steam one. Set to a whole tip. Okay, so at 1.2 bars, doesn't seem to be like too crazy of a pressure, which is a good thing. I'm actually able to inject air without the thing going nuts. So what I mean is, you got a little bit of time to texture the milk. That's important. All right, so first try, and it's... Did it work out? Yeah, yeah. For a first try, not bad. Okay, so I wasn't able to really pour a design in this cup, but for first attempt, you can at least see that the milk is nice and creamy. So I'm at the Olympia Express booth here with Sasha. And Sasha is going to show us something really cool, a brand new development, and it's called the Mina. Let's have a look. Um, so this is the little Mina that we presented um, on the 27th, so at the beginning of this uh, fair. And it's a manual espresso press. It's um, from the design stripped down to our usual cremina that we built uh, since uh, 57 years. It has no boiler and it's made for travel uh, mostly. The design is very handsome. To me it reminds me a little bit of something I've seen before with those legs like that. Could be a grasshopper, also with the green anodized, what do you call that, jacket essentially. Yeah. Could, you, could you talk about the materials once real quick? Yes, um, the legs and the main components of the mechanics are stainless steel um, that you can see here and the green body outside is aluminum, anodized aluminum, you said this correctly. Basically as a heat jacket. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, let's just do a workflow once. Oh, yeah. by the way, what, what size is that portafilter there? Uh, the portafilter is uh, 49 millimeters. So okay. it's uh, mm -hmm. also the same as on our other machines like the Cremina. Okay, and I see you got the water warmed up here. So you can just run us through a workflow one time and show us how it works. Okay, so I had um, a little bit of water in there to keep it warm. I will then fill it up again and start the extraction. So water goes in through the top until you can see the water level. Lock in the portafilter. Like on any other espresso machine, no fancy mechanisms there that are new. And then we start lifting up the lever and let the water flow down to the coffee puck. And we apply at the beginning just up around two bars of pressure. This is just to pre-infuse the coffee puck. And so we have a, a nice and even extraction. Then we release the pressure, fill in the brew pad again with water and start the extraction. Currently I'm running at seven bars. And I hold this and the flow starts. Looking pretty good. Thank you. We changed coffee this morning, so it's uh, quite a gamble. And when I'm finished with the shot, I'm uh, bottoming out. Uh, the pressure drops and I let it drop down to around one bar until I release the pressure. And you have a good shot of coffee. Yeah, look at that. Pretty nice. Uh, maybe I should give that a taste once, and then you can show me the cleanup. Is that like a medium or a lighter, lighter roast? Medium to medium light, mm -hmm. yes. It's pretty fruity, actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good. Thanks for showing me that. Maybe you could uh, also show me cleanup, like what do you have to do next? Exactly. Um, usually, after I pull a shot, I pull through just air. So you can press air through. Um, you can see it, has, it drips a little bit. That's just the residue water that didn't make it through the coffee puck. Then I release again the pressure. Then you can just pull it out and it's dry. So knock out and then uh, wipe it like with every other espresso machine. Thank you very much, Sasha. I do appreciate you uh, showing me this, this new product of yours. You're welcome. <laughs> Have a nice day. Bye now. I'm 
here at the Eureka stand and we're going to take a look at the whole range of atom grinders. I've got Sylvia here to show us. Let's have a look and let's start with this really cool one right here that caught my eyeball. This is the barista. So, Sylvia, can you tell us some can you tell us something about the uh, barista? Yes, of course. First of all, I would like to introduce a little bit of our atom range. Atoms are really powerful, really uh, professional oriented model but at the same time they are really compact so in some markets could be also a possible coffee grinder for home use it depends on the markets another important element that is in common for all our atom is the silent technology that i would like to stress it's a really nice feature and here we have our atom barista Atom Barista is a 75 mm uh, burst atom and uh, it is conceived for uh, a home user. So in respect of other atoms it has uh, a really minimal design uh, conceived for home use. As you can see here it has uh, a really small hopper in respect of uh, an atom specialty. Uh, it is of uh, it is made of triton so really really strong and fall proof and uh, other important element concerning usability are uh, the dial as you can see here it's uh, really big and really precise and uh, in respect of other atom it has uh, a small uh, different uh, fork more minimal so more uh, home oriented it is a grind by time uh, atom, so you have uh, the single dose, uh, the double dose, uh, the extra dose uh, and the manual mode. And as you can see it's really silent, really, really silent. And another important element is that uh, you have uh, a light that uh, helps you to see better the coffee and it's something that people like some way. I like it a lot. <laughs> I think uh, the barista is not uh, the hands-free uh, solution, so you have to maintain the porta filter on uh, your hand. Here we have uh, one of uh, the oldest uh, atom uh, on the market, it's the atom specialty, but as uh, I previously said to Tom, it's old but a nice guy. It has uh, all the features of an Atom W, it has single dose, uh, double dose, uh, you can adjust uh, the time, so it's a grind by time model, and you can use it uh, also in manual mode. It has a silent technology and this is more uh, commercial oriented, of course. In respect of uh, our new Atom, it has uh, a fork a little bit more uh, minimal and similar to a Mignon. It is hands-free, of course, and uh, you can uh, grind both with uh, the button on the faceplate, but also with the micro switch. This is Atom Touch. Atom Touch has a 65 mm burst and has uh, the other Atom, it has uh, a similar screen. So single dose, double dose, extra dose and manual mode. Also in this case we have a grind by time Atom with a big hopper conceived for uh, commercial use mainly. It is hands-free and it has a, a simple fork and you can, uh, you can grind uh, by micro switch. It has the light, one of the newest uh, uh, Atom, the Atom Excellence. Uh, it is available both in 75 and 65 millimeter bursts and uh, the screen is the same as the other Atom. It's a grind by time Atom. One of the most important features that I would like to stress is the fork. As you can see here, the fork is really heavy and really stable and is perfect for a commercial use where you have to be fast. So you can put the porta filter in and the porta filter is really stable. It has a rubber on the fork so it's anti-scratch and you can uh, start uh, to grind with the micro switch.
In this case, it's in the extra mode, but you can use it in single dose. This is our Atom line in a very, very quick uh, way. And uh, then we have uh, another important Atom, maybe one of the most uh, awaited in these uh, months. And this is uh, our uh, Atom W. Atom W, in respect of the other models, uh, is a grind by weight Atom. So on the screen, as you can see, you don't have uh, the seconds, but you have uh, the uh, grams. You can select uh, single dose, double dose, uh, triple dose, on, or also manual mode. The fork is the same of the Atom Excellence, so really stable, uh, really mm, huge in some way. And uh, an important element in respect of uh, the Libra, that is our uh, uh, grind by weight Mignon, is the possibility to switch between grams to seconds. I will show you. Here you have uh, the screen, you can select grind by time. And when you return to the main uh, screen, you have a green, uh, a green screen that indicates uh, that you are in uh, grind by time mode. So you can select uh, the same dose, uh, but with seconds. In some, in some cases, like especially for uh, commercial, u commercial use, uh, this kind of uh, feature is really interesting. It's faster. Yeah. Because no tearing. No. It's already calibrated. This is an important feature, so you don't have to calibrate it. Our waking system is ready to use, like in the Libra. In this case, you can see the Atom W with a small hopper. That is not the standard one, it's an optional. But in some cases, especially for home use, could be a nice solution. Let's try it. Yeah. It automatically detects when there's a porter filter in there, and then it will grind. And it also just turns on the light when it's grinding. So now it's done. Cool. Uh, now all the atoms are explained, and uh, I hope to be clear. Thanks very much, Sylvia. I appreciate it. So I am here at the Eureka stand with a barista, Benji. You can check him out on Instagram. Say, <laughs> say hi real quick. Hi. Hi, everyone. And he's going to show us um, a demo on this really cool machine over here. This is a Costanza from Eureka. This is the model that's got a PID and a rotational pump in it. So take it away, barista Benji. Of course, yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's talk you through the machine. So uh, we have two versions of the Costanza. There's the, this is the R version, which means it's got the rotary pump. Um, personally, I prefer this because it gives you the uh, consistency of espresso pressure. Um, we also have one with a vibration pump, which uh, can tend to fluctuate, but it does give you a good option at a lower price rate for good quality coffee. Uh, the rotary pump for me is ideal because I want to make sure that uh, when I'm using good quality uh, specialty coffee that I can get consistency from my espresso. So I need to keep the pressure consistent and I need to keep the temperature consistent. On the uh, Costanza you can change uh, the settings in a nice easy way so that you can set up the, the coffee however you wish. Um, like you see? Um, yeah, it flickers a little bit, but that's just in the video. Okay, no worries. So uh, here I'm just going to uh, change the pressure a little bit. Currently it's set to the hot mode. We have warm, hot, and very hot. It keeps it simple so that we can, uh, we can easily adapt to different types of coffee. But because I'm going to be using uh, some uh, medium roast coffee that is relatively fresh, uh, about a week old, I'm going to set it to the hot temperature, which is around 91, 92 degrees. Okay. So let's save that and let's make some espresso. So today I have uh, a specialty coffee that is from uh, my friend's roastery back in England, in Southampton. It's a blend of uh, El Salvador and Brazil uh, from Blue Hour Roastery. We've set it up on the we've set it up on the Eureka Maxi to be dosing uh, 18.5 grams in, and I'm going to be extracting at 32 grams of espresso. So it's a little less than the one to two ratio that you might expect. Where with these uh, with the Costanza, you can engage a mechanical pre-infusion early like this. and then engage the main pressure. Okay. So I'm going to extract 32 grams out. 
engage the pre-infusion. And then the main infusion. As you can see here, we've got our shot timers as well, which is good for the price range of this machine as well, because that's something that often gets left out of this, this kind of single board machine. Now, oh, so close. <laughs> I said about 32, 32.3, I think is as good as we're going to get. I would say it looks pretty good to me. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so uh, now I'd like to just show a little bit on the steam. Um, it's a very high power steam, steam one. It gives you that sort of cafe quality steam power. Um, it's a little trickier for home users to get used to. Once you're able to work out the pressure, in, in, after using it a couple of times, you do get a better quality of milk foam for the beverages that you're making. So we're going to use the uh, alternative milk today. Okay, let's see the angle that you use there and, and how long you're steaming for. Of course. So, always give it a quick purge. I'm going to do an impromptu latte out session as well. So, I'm going to start with the, with the steam one pointing mostly down and just putting the, 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 the ridge of the steam one just slightly off center like that and resting on the top. Okay. All I'm really going to do is bring the jerk down very gently so that we get that few seconds of uh, tearing from the, from the milk. So. Right away. They're quick, holy cow. <laughs> so that for me is the perfect sort of temperature for um, specialty coffee. We're aiming for between sort of 55 and 60 degrees. If you want to like it a little bit hotter, you can do more, but obviously just, to, just in terms of getting that peak sweetness from milk, that's what we're aiming for here. And to mix with espresso. Yeah, right. <laughs> that looks really, really good. No worries. Especially when you consider that that's a, an alternative milk. Uh, yep. Yeah, great job there. Thank you so much. Benji. I hope you, oh, I hope you enjoyed the, the demo of the machine. Yeah, it was a perfect demo. Thanks so much also <laughs> for the information. I appreciate it. No worries. Thank you so much. All righty. Man, son of a gun. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks very much for watching the video. I hope it was interesting for you. And until next time, I say happy coffee drinking and happy espresso drinking. Bye now.